Good morning, folks. We've got news from beneath our feet all the way to 11 light years out. The dead dark matter horse is now being kicked by mainstream science, but before we get to all of that, we're starting off as always over at spaceweathernews.com. We are in the throes of sunspot minimum in the 11-year cycle, and even the one active region in coming bottom left is not flaring or in any danger to flare. The now departed corona hole from the north is responsible for the solar wind intensity seen this morning as speed of the plasma increasing. It is a minor stream only, however, and modest instability is the core of the disruption. The Earth-facing coronal holes won't see their plasma hit Earth for about three more days, but until then their IMF and kinetic alpha waves are already interacting, and it's a wonder we didn't get a major quake yesterday as we took more magnitude 5 potential foreshocks than in the last two weeks. Apart from Japan, the biggest concern is the swarm in New Caledonia. That is a lot of rumbling, but hopefully just aftershocks from the big ones as October rolled into November. Full info at quakewatch.net. We've got ecological befuddlement as in situ experiments revealed that the global ocean changes expected by the end of the century don't even come close to the temperature and pH changes to which coral are subject over just one day. NASA has spotted the mechanism by which high energy electrons are lost from the Van Allen belts and shot down through the atmosphere. Earth's weakening magnetosphere will increase those effects. Scientists have determined that Pluto's atmosphere is utterly riddled with carbon pollution haze of the natural variety, which is why the planet is so cold. Wait, what did they say? Carbon haze cold. Okay. These Mars features are the result of geologic ripping during ancient volcano eruptions on the red planet. Some grabbins are hundreds of meters deep. Quickly coming to Greece where flash floods have taken over a dozen lives, and the system responsible is not moving out very quickly. Thoughts and prayers go out there. Up next, we are going 11 light years away to Ross 28. It's an inactive red dwarf star that doesn't really flare or do much of anything other than exist. Except perhaps play host to the closest Earth-like planet not bathed in preposterous radiation like Proxima b. One could argue that it is a much better candidate with such a quiet star, and in about 80,000 years it will come just inside of the Proxima distance and be the closest system to our own. Its polar Fahrenheit temperature is about 70 below zero at night, and near the equator the days can hit 70 above. That is amazing. But perhaps not as amazing as the death of dark matter, which was a big part of our video, How to Introduce the Observer's Community. If you somehow have not seen or shared that yet, I honestly can't believe the picture painted by our community over the last half decade. And as the 1,000 times stronger detector at Zurich came up zilch on Axion Dark Matter, the claims by us, nature, and others about the death of dark matter are solidified. The quote from the physicist is, back to the drawing board. Folks, two great ways to stay informed and support the community are our app and our book. Links to both can be found in the video description box below. There is really no way to impress enough the magnitude of effect the introduction video is having on some folks. It is one of the best tools I have ever given you in your discussions and intellectual battles. We've got your win maps, followed by shots of our star to close, and we greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.